Welcome to Conquering Mount Scrap World with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here today with a how-to. I've had a lot of requests to use certain, uh, to show you how I use certain rulers that I have in my sewing room that I've used for different things. The one we're going to be covering today is the Easy Angle Ruler. Now there are several different varieties of this ruler. The one I prefer is from Sharon Hultgren. Haltgren, I hope I'm not butchering her name. I'll have that in the show notes below as to where you can find it. And we're going to show you how to do this. But first, let's do our shout out. Shannon from Moody Girl Creates is having a lot of fun in her channel. She does a lot of uh, shopping fabric, but she also does some tutorials and she shows you different notions and all the rest of the stuff. So go check out Shannon and if you tell her, when you go over there and you like what you see, tell her that Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrap More sent you and it, cause it's going to be a surprise shout out for you. Now, the other thing you're going to find in the show notes besides the the uh, YouTube channel link for Shannon is going to be our Facebook room and our all the fun things we do there. We share photos, we ask questions, we make use of the virtual sewing room so you have a virtual sewing date if you want 24 7 or whenever you're in the mood. Now the other thing that's in there is our Zoom sew dates from now until the end of the year. Th those are the dates that are posted. So mark them down, come join us if you're interested in that kind of thing. You get to meet ladies and gentlemen from all over and it's not just North America we have ladies joining us from Europe and the UK and Australia and New Zealand it was wonderful so and the last thing share like and subscribe uh, I can't tell you how much that's going to help our analytics be pushed forward and we get more viewers and more subscribers because when you watch the YouTube videos that's how I get paid and that's where I put that money towards fabric and batting and backing for charity quilts the other thing is I do give free speaking engagements to any guild that's out there. I, I think it's a wonderful way to meet other quilters around, uh, around the world and I have fun and they let me stay with the show and tell because I haven't charged them anything. So <laughs> come on in, we've got some, some demonstrations on cutting and a very quick little block I'll show you what I made out of these. Okay, so come on in. This is the triangle we're going to be using and this is like I say, the, I didn't spend money on this for a very long time and then I found out that wow I really like it. Now it has no tip on this side because it's flat and that makes up for your 3 8 and this one also is blacked out but the way I use this. Now I have a piece of low volume here and some really cute teddy bear fabric so what I'm going to do I'm going to lay this out just like so and line up my edges on my teddy bear. Now I've cut this width three and a half inches so it should work. Oh perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this back over here. Now I'm going to cut, end up cutting two at a time on this do, using this way. Right? Now I do have an extra piece of teddy bear fabric because I didn't have one that would meet the end. And of course we have a cat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to leave a bit of an edge there and just gent, I'm not even going to gently tug. I'm going to move my mat and just flip it around just like so and make sure that everything lines up and then I'm going to cut off my end piece. Right? So here we go, now we're back to this position here and I'm going to move, now I have two of them, now I have two of them ready to sew, right? So I'm just going to cut a couple more, I don't know how many more I'm going to cut here now. So on your next cut you line up your angle, you've got that flat edge right there, there we go, two, four. Six, eight, and this the minute here. Get out of your way. There we go. There's eight triangles. And if I was going to make a nine patch out of this, I would make just like this. I'm able to take this apart like so, and cut this into three and a half inch square. 
There we go. Now we'll head to the cutting or the sewing table and I'll show you what I'm going to do with eight triangles and a centerpiece or a three and a half centerpiece. Okay? Okay, so we're at the sewing machine now. Um, this is the ruler we used, right? And I'm going to show you how to put these together. Now, you always start with the hardest part of a block first, right? But there's no real hard part on this block because it's just, you know, nine patches and a square. Or half or triangles and a square. Now you line them up. I always line them up where the blunt end goes in first. Because that's how I've cut them. And I've cut them in pairs so that the good sides are facing each other. And it makes this uh, half square triangle path a lot easier to line up. Because you don't have a lot of stuff that you got to worry about now, right? Yeah, it's just so quick. When I first got this tool, I was like, eh, I had a little bit of extra coin. And I thought, okay, we'll give it a whirl, see how, how radical it is. Now, there are other rulers like this on the market to make half square triangles. And I'm not saying this one's better than any of them. This is the one I bought. This is the one I like. So... Now, three and a half inch strips are very, uh, it's kind of like a pantry item in here for me. So, and also two and a half, and two inch, and one and a half strips. So I can make half square triangles just out of my strips, right? I don't have to make other or special cuts or anything else, right? Okay, last triangle through. Now, this is the hard bit. You gotta clip all of them apart, <laughs> which is not hard. We've all done that hundreds of times, and you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. I'm just gonna get that off. No, I do not have a leader ender project today, but I will someday. Okay. Now, this is the hard part, and I'm trimming. Now, this side is trimmed at a 90 degree angle, right? Like you can see, this is at a 90 degree angle. I like mine trimmed a little bit deeper, but I'm gonna, I'm, I'm okay with the 90 degree, because I only have to now take off one dog ear. So that makes it a lot quicker too, you know? So that was a time, it was a time saver, because now I don't have to cut weird sizes or cut a size up and then trim down, because that's never fun either. Okay. And, there. Now, I'm just gonna pull all that, and put that in the garbage or the scrap bag, and just I'm just gonna finger press these, because they're now three and a half. They are now finished at three and a half, right? Like, I don't have to worry about where this is and where, where it's going or, you know, anything else. I just have to line up my tri Hasper triangles, that's it. And I'm just gonna line up, lay them out and this is going to be so quick and so fast. I'm going to end up with a really cute nine and a half inch unfinished block that I can make. And I've used it all out of my scraps or my stash. It's that simple. There. Now you could play around with this and do other little fun things with it. But this is what I've came up with. So this is what our, where I was thinking, but like you say, you could make this go this way as well, and then make these go in, or yeah, you make these go in, and you'd get a totally different look, right, if it was all scrappy. I think we're gonna stick with this for now, for now just because it, I did use all the same fabric, right? So none of it's really scrappy. Okay, so now we go to webbing. We can web our block. I kind of like that, that look. I just kind of like that little crazed. This one is really cool, actually. This, where it goes in, I'm not sure. Ooh, I could do that. And it kind of makes it look like a crazed anvil or something. I don't know. We could go out. We could go out. Okay, so now we've played around with this several times. So this is what we're going to make. 
we can have fun with this. We're allowed to have fun. Okay, so we're webbing. So we're taking these and just lining them up and down like so. It took longer to actually figure out what block we were going to make with this easy <laughs> this tutorial is uh, which way are we going with the the triangles and which block are we making because they're they're fun to flip around right because they're all going to fit and they're all going to work it's going to be no lovely so now you take it back right you line this up and make sure this is still all in the position you're, you want it to be in because you only have to, if you had to rip something open at this point, this you'd only rip one seam. So let's go, let's make the next one because it looks like we're doing good. Okay. And this goes here. This goes like so. There we go. And we're gonna open that up and check it. Just to make sure we haven't done anything, put anything in the wrong way. Because now is the time to do that. Before you start sewing it the other way. This is why I love webbing, by the way. This is why I love webbing. So that looks like the block we decided we were gonna do, right? So here we are, let's go. Now, I'm going to push this in and that out. Okay. There. I'm just going to clip open this so I have good access to what I'm doing. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Everything fits nice, too. Yeah. And now we take the other side and we just run down that quick seam. And we might have to get a quick little press, but it looks pretty good so far. So good. Now, that center square is being pushed in, right, from both sides, so it nests nicely, and there we go. I'll give you a quick peek at the back so you can see what we're doing before we get to that ta -da moment. Oh, if there's any confusion or on what I said earlier about speaking to quilt um, it was I speak for free, because that's Part of what I do. There we go. Now let's show you the back. So all of the seams go in, right, to the back because it causes the least resistance. Now I have, I can take this and start playing around with it, swirling the the seams like that, and it will lie flat. Right. So there we go. There we go. Nice, quick little seams there. Here we go. Just give it a quick, just gonna give it a quick finger press here now. And then you can see what we're doing. So now let's get to the ta da moment. Okay, ta da! This is our big ta da moment. So this came together very quickly with this easy angle ruler. And like I say, there, there's so many of these on the market, but I mean, this is the one I like. I mean, there's all sorts of them that will, will do all sorts of wonderful things, but like I say, I like this one. This is the one everybody wanted me to show them. So here we are. This is your how-to. And you do, I'm sorry, if, if the, the changing around of the blocks got the triangles was a little crazy there when we were sewing. It's just that this was on the fly. This is something we created with teddy bear fabric. Teddy bear is playing hockey, which is, I just think is so adorable. Um, so we had a little bit of fun with this and it's fast and quick. Now I was able to make eight half square triangles, like within 
minutes like just boom right and i had it pulled it from a three and a half inch strips right so this makes this cutting and everything very quick very fast so i hope you have an absolutely amazing week ahead and everything goes right for you in your sewing room and remember to have fun and enjoy the process of quilting okay you guys until we meet again you guys take care bye my husband and i would love to thank you for all of the amazing people that we have met along this crazy YouTube adventure that we've been having. Uh, we do free speaking engagements too. So if you're part of a guild and they're looking for, you know, people to talk and, you know, and chat with, you know, on their uh, monthly meetings, tell them that I'm doing free ones just to help the guilds out because it's been a tough time for the guilds as well. You know, share, like, and subscribe with your friends, you know, make sure that they're, you know, they, they, they get the word out on us. That's, I mean, that's the best way you can do to help us out. So until we meet again, I want to thank you. Okay. Goodbye.